Hi kids! Today we will learn about native and invasive plants and many more things about them. We know how important are plants for all animals and human beings too. Plants are the primary source of food for all living beings. Plants provide food like fruits, vegetables, cereals, and pulses for omnivores and herbivores. These herbivore animals act as food for carnivores. And carnivore animals like lion, tiger, cheetah, eagle eat other animals as their food. And both plant products and flesh of other animals acts as the food for omnivore animals and non-vegetarian people. So the primary source of energy and food is plants. So kids, now let's see what are native plants. Plants that originally belong to a particular area are called native plants. This includes plants that have developed, occur naturally, or existed for many years in an area. Native plants form an environment where several species of plants and animals have developed to support each other. Example a species of plant may exist at a particular place because a certain animal pollinates the plant, that is, spreads or scatters its pollens in different locations and thus helps in fertilization of plants. And that animal too is benefited as pollens acts as a source of food for those animals. Also, Certain species of plant may exist in a particular environment because of fertile environment that allows its seeds to germinate. Now let's see some examples. American beauty berry, service berry, trumpet creeper, bee balm are some plants that are native plants of America. Chamomile Cornflower, silver birch are some examples of plants that are native to Germany. Grevillea laurel, yellow kangaroo paw, acacia, and red flowering gums are native plants of Australia. Wild columbi and black eyes susan are native plants of Toronto. Kids, we must prefer to grow only native plants in our garden. Let's learn why. Native plants are adapted to our climatic conditions. That means low maintenance. They're naturally programmed to withstand rainy winters and dry summers. Or whatever are the climatic conditions of the place. And they also benefit other species of the environment. All kinds of wildlife use native plants as food, as shelter, as places to nest or to reproduce. Native plants are so much adapted to the environment and they prevent erosion improve water quality, cycle nutrients, and much more. So native plants contribute to maintain a healthy environment. Non-native plants are those that do not originally belong to that area. And invasive plants are those that spread to places beyond where they are wanted and disturbs the ecological balance of environment. Invasive plants creates imbalance in environment as they compete with the native plants for space, soil, and nutrients. 
and can threaten the existence of native plants and other life forms that are dependent on the native plants. That is, if native plants die, all the small or big organisms that depend on native plants will also starve or die. Kids, there are exceptions too. That is, not all invasive plants are harmful for us. Some are beneficial too, like crops, rice, or potatoes. These are invasive plants, but these are very beneficial for us. As societies move plants to new locations for cultivation as crops or ornamentals, or transport them by accident, some of them may become invasive species that can be damaging for the native plant communities. Besides the ecological damage, these species can also damage agriculture, infrastructure, and cultural assets of the environment. The rich diversity of unique species across many parts of the world exists only because bioregions are separated by barriers, particularly large rivers, seas, oceans, mountains, and deserts. If these barriers are not there, this diversity in plants and animals cannot be maintained. But human breaks all these barriers. And while transporting things from one place to the other, seeds of some plants are transported to other regions. And they may become invasive species in that location. Humans are moving across the globe at an unprecedented rate and that may lead to increase in the number of invasive species. So kids, we learn what are invasive species and what are native plants and what are the benefits of native plants and drawbacks of invasive species. Now, let's see what kind of environmental species are good or bad for the plants. Flooding, drought, heavy rain, wildfires, tornadoes and extreme temperatures are not good for plants. They may uproot and destroy many plants. Now let's see some human activities that are not good for plant life on earth. Forests are being cleared up to make fields for crops. Construction leads to loss of marsh habitat. Factories lead to air pollution and causes acid rain to fall on trees and plants which kill them. Even gardening leads to plantation of invasive plants as we may plant trees other than the plants native to our area. So kids, we learned how our activities are disturbing the ecological balance of the earth. So we should prevent air pollution as much as possible. We should not cut trees for industrialization and other development purposes. We should not clear out forests for cultivation. We should promote the growth of native plants in our area rather than planting the species of plants that are not native. So kids, today we learned a lot about plants. What are native plants? Importance of native plants? What are invasive plants? And what are the drawbacks of invasive plants? And what activities are good for plants? And what are bad for plants? Now go ahead and take a quiz to learn more. Bye-bye. Tootway has thousands of animated videos on math, 
English, and science to clear the core basics of these subjects.